Good morning, and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. Glad to have you joining us. Several announcements before we begin. Uh, First of all, today, this Sunday, is our last day of Sunday school until next year, and uh, our Sunday school students are making ornaments. So a fun day going on in Sunday school with those young people making ornaments uh, for their Christmas celebrations. Keep in mind, our service of lessons and carols is next Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Advent. We've been doing that now the last several years, having that service of lessons and carols on that last Sunday in Advent. So please keep that in mind for next Sunday, December 19th. And then the Christmas Eve schedule. Thanks to all of you who filled out the survey. Our services this year will be at 4, 5.30, and 7. So 4, 5.30, and 7. The 4 o'clock service is more oriented to children and families. And uh, we want to uh, let you know of that schedule as soon as possible. I know that uh, some of you... Don't have that. We don't have that later service that some of you are used to attending. 
Uh, it's just that so many of the respondents wanted those earlier times for worship, and so that will be our schedule moving forward. So, again, thanks for filling out the survey, and thanks for bearing with us with trying to, to come up with the best schedule possible uh, for this year, uh, particularly having Mike Everson play all of those services. This coming Wednesday, we have a live nativity in our church parking lot put on by our youth group and confirmation students. It's a lot of fun, so come and join us 6.30 to 7.30 this coming Wednesday, December 15th. Uh, it's kind of a rustic live nativity, when, and you come in to the parking lot, view the live nativity, and then when you leave, we give you a bag of popcorn. So a fun event this coming Wednesday, again, 6.30 to 7.30. We welcome all listening in the radio audience. Our broadcast today is sponsored by Connie Hartman. And I'll now give you a few moments to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. We now hear our opening hymn. We hear the Annunciation, sung by Nancy Thorson and her dad Paul Hansen and her daughter Indigo. So highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, Servant here and bless me all my life. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us together pray the prayer of the day. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame to praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at that time when, you, when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, as the axe is laying at the root of the trees, every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats, 
must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And and we, what should we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns and lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O branch of Jesse, free your own from Satan's tyranny, from the depths of hell, your people save and give them victory over the grave. Rejoice! Rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Captive Israel, that's us. That's me, 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 and we, we, we. We're over here. Mourning in lonely exile. So ransom me. I'm captive. Come. No, seriously, come. That's who today's reading from Isaiah is written to. These poor people stuck in Satan's tyranny who are supposed to rejoice. Or if we're being less dramatic, the subject of the reading is the Israelite people who find themselves in exile, turned out of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, forced away from their homes and the temple, which was their spiritual home. These exiles are in a land that means little to them, and they're struggling to keep the faith. They're feeling so disconnected to what they had been used to for religious practice. They're in exile lonely, despairing, maybe a little dramatic. We might be able to relate, right? In the depths of hell, your people save. Rejoice. We've never felt that way. I don't mean to make light of despair. I don't mean to make light of people who are displaced and certainly not of those who are refugees. What I'm poking fun at is the disparity of the lyrics in this ancient hymn, from the depths of hell your people save, but also from the depths of hell rejoice. Rejoice, I said. Emmanuel is coming to you, O Israel. Am I happy? Am I sad? Rejoice from the depths of hell. Sure. So imagine the scene. You're in exile, sitting by a babbling brook, missing home, missing normal, missing all you've ever known, missing church and community as you once knew it. 
You look all around and everything is different. What you do remember about your God is that God saves and redeems. But on the banks of the babbling brook in another person's land, everything unfamiliar or around you, it's hard to believe in that saving God. And it's even harder to rejoice. Rejoice. That saving God is supposed to be coming. But that God didn't come yesterday. And there sure haven't been any signs that that saving God is coming tomorrow. It seems just like more of the unfamiliar same. And you want me to rejoice? What is Isaiah thinking? That this is the crowd the prophet was sent to work with. This is the crowd he's got to proclaim good news to. And this is the crowd who needs their faith restored. So he's got to find the words to light the spark of hope in them again. Rejoice. Or as he might say it, rejoice. Through gritted teeth. But is that how we bring peace? Is that how we light the flame of hope? Is that how we spark joy? Do commands ever work? Commands to rejoice work as well as getting someone to rejoice is telling someone who's all wound up just to calm down. Which normally goes over as well as asking someone who is clearly mad, are you mad? Only do that if you want to see smoke come out of their ears. You've got to be more subtle about it. You can't just walk up to someone and say, be happy. Let it go. Calm down. Are you mad? Rejoice. That tactic doesn't work. As prophets and people, we've got to pull different things from our toolbox to spark that joy. So I ask you this morning, what do you do that gives you joy? Wherever you're watching or listening, think about what do you do that gives you joy? For some people, it's singing. One song that you cannot sing without breaking into a little bit of joy is one that's okay to practice during this Advent season of waiting. It's hard to sing a depressing version of Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. I mean, you can't help but start moving with that song. So what are your other ideas? These past two weeks, I've been reminded of one way our community finds deep joy, and that's in serving. A week ago Wednesday, it was with our youth group and confirmation at family service, sorting candy so that kids in our community not only get treats under the tree, but also sweets to go alongside it. And this past week, we spent an hour at Target filling tags for the giving tree. It's nice to work hard and get tired by doing something for someone else, making life a little bit easier for someone else. It's what John the Baptist told that brood of vipers to do. That brood of vipers. Can you say that nicely? Brood of vipers? Everyone's a little dramatic this week. So that brood of vipers, if you want to feel close to God like the exiles and the Israelites in exile, whose faith was fading, who longed for signs of the kingdom, that wanted to feel hopeful, like salvation from despair was coming, if the brood of vipers and the exiles wanted to feel better than they did in their present situation, they looked to the prophets who told them how to feel close to God. Like Isaiah, it was John the Baptist's job to point them back to loving God and trusting that God loved them. The brood of vipers longed for something different. They wanted to know what they must do to be followers of God. 
prepare the way for the one who is to come. What should we do, they pleaded. And he gives them the answer. Whoever has two coats must share one. You want to find God? You want to feel real joy? Serve your neighbor. Do something for someone else. Do something and expect nothing in return. Love unconditionally. And then you'll get a glimpse of what God is like. And when you know that love and when you feel that love and when you share that love, when it's downright, then it's downright hard not to rejoice. It's no longer a command, rejoice. But in service and in sharing and in being the love of God for a world in need, a feeling will well up deep inside and then it is hard not to rejoice. This third Sunday in Advent, we pause our watching and waiting, our quiet contemplation. And we celebrate by doing as God commanded, in loving God and loving neighbor, and in our service we rejoice. And when we love and when we serve, we do the holy week of warming work of warming the manger. Preparing our hearts and our whole lives for the one who is to come. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Ransom us captive people today. Ransom us from whatever holds us back and free us so that we too can rejoice. Rejoice in your presence, rejoice in your love, and rejoice in the way you call us to be and serve and love one another. Amen.
At this time, we continue to give thanks for your giving, whether online, through the mail, or here in person. A reminder that in your giving to our general offering, you keep the lights on and the heat going for things this week, like the preschool Christmas program that's taking place, the Sunday School Ornament Festival, our Bible studies that are gathering to give food baskets, and all of the day-in and day-out ministry of this place. We give thanks as well that this time of year, so many of you are generous in giving above and beyond your normal offerings to our giving tree and warm the manger and adopt the unit and just spreading Christ's love into our community. So thank you for your generosity. With the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the opportunities we have to give in this season. May the words of John the Baptist awaken us to the needs of others and inspire us to reach out in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, your Spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn us against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms and grant us your healing presence. Attend to any who are hungry, lonely, sick, or grieving, praying especially for Dave Resch and for those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, Amen. We now pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now we will listen to Joy to the World. And now go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.